I walk down a street and bump into a pole. It hurts. I walk down the same street and avoid the pole. I walk down the same street again. Elderly gentleman, very rich elderly gentleman, is dying. Told by his doctors, you got six months to live. So his son comes to him and says, Dad, you got all this money and there's all this stuff you haven't done. You have six months to live. This is the perfect time. You go out and you, and you can go do your bucket list and you could give to charities and you could give away because you know you can't take it with you. And he goes, well, if I can't take it with me, I'm not going. <laughs> That joke from our own Al Cid. <laughs> A receptivity prayer. I am open to the evolution of my soul. My heart is alert. My heart is receptive. My next step is here and now. And so it is. A world that works for everyone. Wow, such a large vision for our movement. You know, that is the vision for our movement. If you go to their website, they'll say our vision is a world that works for everyone. And I was thinking about this. And I was thinking about this. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. And what I came to was, is by having a vision of a world that works for everyone, means we're thinking it doesn't already do that. They get phone calls in the of the night. Now, it can really look like it doesn't, right? I mean, you know, a, a, a daughter dies. Uh, there's a town in um, the Congo where over 85% of the girls under 16 have been raped. I mean, I could go on and on with all the different ways it really looks like this world is not working for everyone, and yet, isn't that what we teach? Isn't the basic principle behind what it is we teach here is that the, what your life is working, and what needs to shift is consciousness, if you want your life to work differently. But that if we don't hold it as already working, then we're out of alignment with what it actually is we teach. Paradox. This is an incredible, and I meant to start with that word so that you know it would have set a little bit better a context. If I started with the word paradox, because it's really important to understand that that is what I am talking about here. I am talking about here that we have a movement where we believe life works for everyone exactly the way it's working, so it works, and yet we look out at the world and we see all this stuff that we go, oh, that really doesn't feel like it's working. And yet when something happened in somebody's life, what it is we teach is look for the good. Paradox. And so we're constantly having to deal with this paradox in our lives on a daily basis. And I don't know, because of our human side, if there's really any way around it except deepening our compassion for what doesn't feel like working. Dr. James Mellon, who I spoke about last week, losing his daughter, got up on Sunday and spoke. And I was blown away by that. Blown away by a man who stands by the principles we teach so deeply. It so inspired me that he could get up and do that. And I was, I was really moved by it. You know, that, that, I mean, I was, I was devastated by what happened in a way that I didn't even fully understand, but, you know, obviously deeply 
uh, impacted by the death of Nora, his daughter. And then he gets up there and speaks in a very vulnerable way, giving breadth and depth to our teaching here in, a, in, in, a, in, what's, in the, what's important in terms of the paradox of it all. Because we feel pain in our lives. Anybody here never feel pain in your life? Okay. And yet it is our job to look for the good. It is our job to remind ourselves of the divine beingness that we are, the divine being that everybody else is, the divine rightness that ev of everything that has occurred because everything leads us to something else that, that can raise us to moments that we didn't even know. So Dr. James now gets to be this standard bearer in a way that he you know, was already and yet somehow now catapults him in a way that I can't even imagine but am now beginning to because he stood up that way around all this and look, look, got to look at myself and go, where am I not standing up and remembering in the midst of tragedy that it has to be okay too? That somehow this has a working in it and that by holding a vision that of a world that works for everyone actually gets in the way of the knowing that it already exists. And so I am here to tell you that I am not for holding a vision of a world that works for everyone, even though our movement wants to do that. I would rather get deeper in my compassionate knowing that it already does. Because it is in that, it is in that knowing that it already does, I get to look deeper into myself and I encourage you to look deeper into yourselves as to whatever's going in in your life is working, whatever's going on in the world must be working because it's all getting us to rise in ways that maybe we wouldn't have if that didn't happen. So what we have here is the constant opportunity to rise. I know you hear me talk about that week after week after week rising, but what else is there to do here? <laughs> I mean, we could go along and not rise and go, woe is me, and woe is all these people that are having all these problems, and aren't they really victims, and, and shouldn't we just feel sorry for them, and then nothing changes. Dr. Holmes said, let me get, transformation does not rectify, it transmutes. Dr. Holmes said, there is nothing to be healed, only truth to be revealed. And yet, paradox, Healing is what we're all feeling and looking for. That in the revealing, healing does occur. In the revealing and the knowing and the depthness of the good that we can feel within our hearts and within our souls of, wow, even though these tragedies are happening, the fires, the this, the that, we can feel it within our souls that something good will come out of this because the phoenix always rises as long as we give it flight. But it is up to us to give flight to that phoenix. We are the ones who have to do that. Nobody can do it for us. You know, I can't give you flight for your phoenix. But I can support you and remind you who you truly are, this divine, infinite being who gets to rise. And that's what we teach here. That's why holding a vision of a world for works for everyone actually intimates that it doesn't already, and yet it does. It must. It's what we teach here. It's the depth of what we believe. This is paradox. Hard concept. I get it. You know, how can you look out at what's going on and say this is a world that works for everyone, and yet it must, because it is what's happening. And in it all must be good. It's up to us to rise to the level of finding it. And that doesn't mean we don't take action to better ourselves. I thought about this in terms of my, I am very, very lucky because I, have, I taught myself how to play the guitar. And what I mean by lucky about that is it never dawned on me that I was playing badly. 
it always dawned on me that it was just the next thing I needed to learn to get better at it. Now, in a lot of other areas of my life, I think I do things badly and beat myself up and do all that kind of stuff. I'm getting way better at that. I don't beat myself up near as much as I used to. Anybody here doing better at that? Beating themselves up less than they used to? Good. Good, 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 because that's part of rising. That is part of rising. So in playing the guitar, right, it was always simply the next riff, the next chord, the next thing I wanted to learn. I was always excited to get there, looking forward to the next thing I was going to teach myself, looking forward to the next thing, never looking back at thinking I was doing things badly. And in so doing, I kept getting better and better and better until at one point I was looking at my fingers flying on the fretboard at some gigs I was playing going, wow, look at that. And I was really getting off on what I was doing like I was somebody sitting in the audience watching. <laughs> Which is an amazing thing, you know, once you get to a point in, in doing something where it becomes so ingrained in you, so embodied, that it actually just happens whether you are consciously thinking about it or not. I mean, that is awesome. And that's what's possible with, with what's going on, what's possible in the world. And so I want to get back to Lynn McTaggart, what we were talking about earlier, because the data in her book about what's going on in the world is extraordinary, you really want to get this book, Power of Eight. Her data alone is worth the book. To hear about all the different experiments that scientists are doing around the world, doing the work that we preach about. And it dawned on me that we got to stop preaching and we got to start doing so. That's why every week for the next nine weeks, we're going to pick a city and, these, and the sacred moment's going to be about giving you the facts of that city and then praying on it. So you want to be here for that be it because you will, you will feel it in yourself also. And it's a very powerful thing when you do something week after week after week. And that's what we'll be doing every week. So I want to do more than just that. The other thing I want to do is actually, you know, one of the things that she spoke about in there that, that I've heard Dr. Holmes talk about as well is that no matter what it is you want to create, it is actually a healing to create it because you have to own it to create it. And in that owning, you've got to clear out whatever gunk is in the way to allowing you to own it to create it. And so that's one of the things that many of us here work on day in and day out is clearing out the gunk so we have the healing. So the whole idea of healing, even though, paradox, nothing to be healed, only truth to be revealed, you know, we're going to hold the paradox of that may be true and how we feel it and how we experience it is actually through healing. Is that fair? You guys with that? All right. So, I want to create circles of eight. And what happens in these circles of eight is that you take turns being the person being prayed for and being the other seven praying. And so what we're going to do is start next week. I would have liked to have remembered to have it together today, but I didn't. We're going to have sign-up sheets for folks who want to be a part of a prayer circle. A prayer circle that allows you to, be, they, to get that healing energy that, that the data shows has just done extraordinary things for an extraordinary amount of people around the world. I mean, I was so inspired by the data on how many people have actually grown, how many people have healed the most horrific illnesses through these simple circles of eight. So I highly recommend you taking advantage of this. But the other thing I want to do is I want to end each week with one person that here in our congregation that we're going to pray on. Because I think that what we need to be doing is real healing right here and now, not just talking about it. You know, 
And I don't know, you know, and I know that this stuff works. I don't know what's going to show up or come out of this, but I'm willing to take a shot around this. How about you guys? Yeah. All right. So we need our first volunteer. <laughs> All right. Come on. So you have exactly one minute to tell everybody what they're praying for you about. Step to, ministry has been a very accidental situation for me. I did not intend to be a minister. And once I noticed I was, and once I noticed I had a spirit uncensored experience, I, and I also have a podcast called Drunken Church Ladies, I had this vision of blending this brand, really owning who I am as a minister and stepping into my power and stepping into my truth. So I would love your support in knowing that truth for me, that I am a powerful minister and my decision to allow spirit to sp speak through me as me in an uncensored, unfiltered way not only makes my life better and more money flow into my life and clarity and time to do all these things, but at the same time has a powerful impact on the world that we live in. All right. Good, so now you're gonna stand here, stand right there, and I want eight volunteers who are gonna come up and place hands on her. Good, all we need is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, good. Place hands on her, and the rest of you are gonna have your intention around this. We're gonna do, Howard, we're gonna keep it at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Howard, you can do the next one. No? No, no. All right, Howard, that's fine. Stay. We'll do nine. <laughs> All right. So everyone, take a deep breath and relax. And no for Karen that she is the minister she has come here to be. That her dream is already realized. That in the depth and breadth of her authenticity and what she brings as a gift is already realized. She is touching the lives of thousands of people, millions. She has the confidence of a giant. She is deeply filled with the love and the care and her gift flourishes. as we each open our hearts and know for ourselves that our dreams come true. And through that opening, through our own healing, we offer that to Karen through hers. Because there is only one. And this one is felt and known here and now. say together and so it is each week we'll have one come up and do this this is going to be every week from now on healing right here and right now not waiting till tomorrow or the next day 
This is what we're going for because this is who we are. We are divine, infinite beings with way more power within ourselves than we even know, and it's our time to release it. This is the time right here and now. This is what we're going to do. Are you with me? Are you with me on this? And so it is. Thank you. I love you. All right. Take out what you're going to give. Hold it in your hand. Unfold it. You want to unfold it because this is powerful creative energy. And this creates the law of circulation. You send it out and it returns multiplied abundantly. We know this to be true. Let's say our affirmation together. God is the source of all supply. Money is God in action. What we give, we receive multiplied abundantly. All that God is, I am, and so it is.